So welcome back to the channel everyone. Um, today mum and dad aren't with me to film this intro but it's probably for the best because we'll just bicker on and go on to different subjects and bicker at each other. So yeah it's just me today. Um, and today is finally our blacking video and it has been so long. How about five months we've been waiting to get blacked. Um, we had a survey well, we didn't have to take out the survey, but the boat had a survey in, I think it was June or Ju no, yeah, July 2020. This was three months before we saw the boat. Uh, so, yeah, it already had a survey on it, so we didn't need to take out one. But on the survey, it said it needed a whole blacking within the next six months. Now, if you work that out, six months later would obviously be January. Um, and we were still in that bloody Thames in Kennet Marina in January so we had no chance of getting it then um, and that's why we cruised during lockdown um, so we could try and you know get the boat blackened because we felt that it was essential um, because we don't want our, our hull to be damaged and you know pits everywhere which turns out there were pits everywhere and it was quite bad the hole um, even William himself, narrowboat Will, said to us that, you know, this is a lot of pitting. You'll see in the video. Um, but yeah, this oof, this is what the journey has led up to, us getting blackened. Us getting blackened. Us getting blacked. Um, and it had taken us a while, <laughs> let's be honest, it had taken us quite a while to finally get to the position where we can get blacked. Um, but we're just so happy we're finally here. And if you didn't know why, I don't think I, I didn't mention it uh, very much. But this journey um, up the Grand Union was for us to get to Braunston and to get in for us to get to Braunston for us to get to Braunston Bottom Lock, uh, where there is a dry dock. And that's what all the journey was for. And that's why we were rushing so much because we wanted to get up there. Um, so dad didn't have to cruise by himself because he doesn't want to do solo cruising Because me and mum had to go somewhere uh, For a week and we got back luckily the day we were going in to get blacked So for the blacking we use a brand called T-Mac uh, We use five litre ones. We bought four five litre ones. So 20 litre which in the end we only end up using two of them uh, but we bought yeah, we bought them from Midland Channeries. We said, oh, can we have some international? Because I wanted to get a whole mile, you know. I wanted to make sure it was really good. Um, but they said they didn't have any. And they recommended T-Mac. So that's why we got T-Mac. So, yeah, normally you'd have to book this um, months in advance. But we called them up. Uh, someone recommended them to us. We called them up. And they say we have a slot on the 20th of April, and this was I think 26th of March. Um, so we had just over a month to get there, all the way up to Bronston from Days Lock. And we couldn't go through Days Lock and go out to Oxford because it still wasn't open. And if we waited a week longer, it would have been open, which we should have done. But oh well, we, you know. We experience the tidal Thames, we go up the Grand Union, but I don't want to waffle on because this video is really long as it is. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy our blacking process. So here we are at Braunston Bottom Lock, lock number one. And as you can see to our left, that is the dry dock. So all we have to do is come through the lock and reverse in. Which sounds quite easy um, when there isn't a bunch of lovely baby ducklings in the way. And yes, it would have been much easier to go and face first. Uh, we were moored just at the next lock, lock number two, facing the right way. But my sister came to visit and they went for a little cruise down to Braunston Marina, uh, which is past the dry dock. So we had to come back the other way. And just like that, we're in. This is the last time Olive will see the light of day. Bye. Bye. So the guy who works here will begin by dredging out any muck or soot in between where the gate goes into, just to make sure there's a proper watertight seal there. As you can see this process is very old fashioned. 
As you can see, the gate begins to shut, and he does this the same way you do a sluice at a lock, just by winding a gear. And then slowly but surely, it begins to drop. I've sped this up because it does take quite a long time. Now this is why they put it adjacent to a lock. That pan we just came out of was at the same level as we are now. But we can just release the water using this windlass and drop it into the lower pound that we just came up. Now if you're wondering how we keep the boat central, all we have to do is drop two of these planks which keep the boat in the middle and of course you need to pull towards you to keep the boat from going on the other side. And now Olive is no longer floating. Now you may be wondering why we're spraying the ground. Uh, we got a tip from the other guy that you should spray the ground before because it can get very muddy and slippery. So we begin spraying down the boat just to get rid of any muck, algae, anything that's just living on the boat or stuck to the boat. Just get it off so we have a nice clean slate to put the blacking on. Now, if you're wondering why the bow looks surprisingly fresh, um, that's because Dad's already done that bit. He just got a bit excited and got a bit ahead of himself. Here's the first person action of the spraying down. It is quite a satisfying job, but you do get very, very wet and messy. Just to make sure everything's dead underneath the new blacking, 
all we're gonna do is just scrape the side of the boat down with some hot water and bleach. Licorice! Hi darling! Oh, don't grab it! Yeah, but she's not... How am I stood down here? Because there's normally water. Yeah. She can't work that out. I wish it was a bit safer, we could let you out darling. Yeah. I wonder why she can't go out. So this probably is a bit overkill, but we want to make sure we do a good job. Oh, a lot um, of loose stuff on this just to make sure we get any and all loose bits off, Dad's going to go around the whole of the boat and give the boat a good scraping just to try and get off whatever's left on there. That's the ones that was walking past me with his blue bottles of blue yesterday. Yeah, I heard. Look at the state of our prop. I think we might need a new split pin. Again, probably a bit overkill, but we're going around the whole of the boat and above the water level and on the water level we're just pinning some rust converter on just to try and convert all this rust so it doesn't cause a problem in the future. successful day all things considered um, yeah dad spent a few hours jet washing down the whole boat getting all the muck and the dirt and all the little bits of rust and everything off and and then he had to go out and he had to go out for about an hour and he had to go out for about two and a half hours uh, to retrieve the other car which was an hour and a half away at Benson Lock and then come back here. So all things considered, we've done pretty well. Then he used some hot water and bleach just to get off all the little microbes and little tiny living creatures. Uh, just because, you know, we don't want anything living underneath there. Uh, just to kill off everything, you know, so we can have a clean slate to do the blackening. And then finally when he got back, he just scraped off a few last little bits that were just going to fall off at some point anyway and reveal little spots with no blackening, with black ink on it. Um, we've really taken our time with this one because if you hire someone to do this, they're likely just to spray the whole boat off and then slap blacking on, that's it. But we're taking a few more precautions like scraping off all the little chips and stuff and also putting rust converter on and primer so yeah I went around and did all the rust converter so I did do something today uh, rust converter the whole boat all the way around every little tiny bit of rust I could find there's probably a few I haven't found um, very generous I was with the rust converter I know you can be uh, less generous than that, but I'm a bit inexperienced, aren't I? Um, and yeah, tomorrow morning we're just going to put the primer on. But that's it for today. Time to shut up shop. 8 o'clock now. We're going to get up bright and early to go to Midland Trannery to get ourselves some anodes and wait for Narrowboat Wheel to get her at 10 o'clock. That's if he actually arrives. I mean, last time he tried to come to Dan, he went 20 miles out of the bloody way. Yeah, I'm gonna get the kettle on now. Why did, why did you not come on, Josh? You're a sleeper. 
Not very good at cleaning. No, I don't drink cleaning. I don't drink tea. No. Put me off, isn't it? Put in liquid into a cup. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how you want it. Oh. As you can see, now about Will is here again to help us out. What a lovely guy. Right. Um, I was with that being sure. Today, today is day two. Two days or whatever. Why do they always do this? They always talk in the back. A couple of miles down the road there. Yeah, today's day two, and today we're going to put the first oh, coat of black in on. What are you being? It's gone. Yeah. How much? Three, Three nine. Three nine. Three nine. Well done. I've been up for four, five. Knocked him down a bit because it needed new seats. Before he came, he said four two, and then he knocked down four hundred because it's a dealer. It's a dealer. He's got no yeah. spare key. The other key is breaking a bit. That's six grand in this showroom. It's beautiful cars and whatnot. It's there yeah. a bit. What they? That one is, yeah. It's, Joshua, well, it's uh, not the freebie. Though, new so. keys, or decent keys yeah. with it, you've probably got what you wanted for it. Yeah. Right. Josh is very happy at the moment. He's driving so hard. Hey, in the bank. Yeah. Nice. The annoying thing is, well, I'm still insured for that car, and I can't get <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yeah, today we're just going to put the first coat on and Will's going to fit four brand new anodes that we went and bought from Midland Chandler today for about 25 quid. And we had to walk about two miles um, back because we don't have the car, obviously. As you heard, I sold mine yesterday and mum is away. Uh, so yeah, we just got four of these that we're going to slap on because the anodes that we got on there are fairly old and out of date. So. Yeah, we need some new ones on there. We've got Will is here to weld them on. What a lovely guy. The grinder, lovely. It's a welder. Nice. Lovely. I'll try and get some power for you. Here he is, the man of the hour, narrowboat Will. Will's going to begin by just grounding down some contact points for the new anodes. And he needs to go back, right back to metal. I'm thinking it's going to catch things going through locks and stuff like that, so I think it's Oh yeah, they better there then. I've ground this, I've ground this down, see how pretty it is there, look. Yeah. What I did, I put it here, mate. Where about? Here. Yeah. Right. Quite pretty as the hole, but I suppose, I suppose you need a length of metal to cover, don't you? What? Well, it's down there, it's got to cover a certain length, doesn't it? I believe it's better back here than I wonder. They cut, they cover seven times their uh, length, apparently. So I'll put it here. Yeah. Because it's really going to cover... I want it to, I want it to cover more back there. Yeah, put it down then where you've got it there. It there. Right. It's a low profile anyway, isn't it? Yeah. So if it's going to hit in the locks, it's going to hit the other one first. Yeah. Yeah, that would be ideal there, Will. All right. Why do they... I, I asked Josh last night why they put decoration on it. Look nice. Yeah, but you can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Two pack. Well, all of this boy, but all of this is. We're going to get a job. But when you are putting on new anodes, just make sure that you black underneath the anode first before you put it on. Attach. To make sure it's earthed, Will is going to attach the clamp to the old anode. Close your eyes, everyone. Close your eyes. So now that Will is doing the welding, while me and Dad are going around doing the fiber. So we're just priming over everything that I did yesterday. Where's the wire brush job? Here we go again. We're going to watch the wire brush. I 
Let's look at that job for a first time wheel, that is beautiful. Second anode where we do the same process over again. Now if you're wondering why Will's grounding down the old anode a bit, that's to make sure he has a good earth point for his clamp. Will didn't have too many welding sticks himself and he was using quite a lot to do these anodes. So the guy who works there said you could use these old, bigger welding sticks. And we tried that but they, as you can see they just didn't work very well. Look at Will go, he's like a bloody professional. Thank God for cameras, eh? Because that is a cool shot. So while Will's doing the remaining anodes, Dad's going to begin the first coat of blacking. Whilst I do the other side.
we know it's probably best to use a tar brush we will use a tar brush on the final layer but it's just a lot lot quicker with a roller and a roller it really doesn't get into all the nooks and crannies so that's why you need to use a tar brush for the third and final layer look at the state of the hole though it is pretty bad you must admit So we're just doing a first layer of blacking up to the primer which is still drying at the moment. So we need to do the first layer at the top, above the water level, once it's dried later. So of course we need to sort out this terrible shaping and we got the man just for the job. Maybe uh, hammer it. Hammer the other end. But of course, it was being a bit stubborn. Eventually, we got it out and we got the new one in. My car. He, um, he did the anodes for us. He's done a bit of blacking in today. Yeah, yeah he's very well. Yeah. Covered in black, but black everywhere. <laughs> Even d down there. Huh. <laughs> Someone knows. Hey? ATDT, back to black, is it? Back to black? Yeah, back to black, is it? Oh, yeah, ACDC. <laughs> right, so uh, Will's on his way now. It's four o'clock. Going right? now, 24 yeah. mile journey back. Yeah, so. We need to go and put another rest. <laughs> yeah, we're not drive back yet, it's not round the corner. No. No. We're all back to the boat. We'll right, see you on the Leicester then. Yeah, you will be right. Yeah, next they let me know when you're when you're getting closer because I'm up towards what, I've been Market just... Harbour for a few weeks. Oh okay. That's good then. For a week or so. Yeah. With Will gone, me and Dad worked after hours to make sure the first coat of blacking was on the entire hull of the boat. The boat was looking lovely already, just with one layer. Now I let Dad do the precision jobs like where the blacking ended and the painting started. So now it is the end of day two. Um, today I think we managed to put all the anodes on, um, blacken the boat. And First coat of blacking. Yeah. And oh, oh yeah, also we put the primer on. I was supposed to be still painting but I've got to tidy up in here first and do dinner <laughs> before I can get back out again. Yeah. But yeah, we've done the whole first coat now. Um, William uh, put all four ads on for us, which is really, really nice of him. 
Um, it's a brilliant job, isn't it? Yeah, and then also our shear pin on the prop needed replacing. So he said, I'll take you well, down. Well, Will looked at that and it was in a terrible state, yeah. wasn't it? I'm surprised it hasn't fell off by now. Yeah. And then he uh, offered to take Dad down to Midland Shinery to buy a new one. So that's what they did. Uh, while they did that, I finished off the blackening. Well, I tried to, but then I had to do some admin. We covered all the um, rust converter with primer. We left that to dry. Had a little bacon butty and egg butty um, and a little bit of cheesecake because. Uh, Narabit Weird has wanted to try Dad's cheesecake for ages now, so I gave him a little bit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. He also did a bit of the back of the boat, he did. Great job, um, Narabit Will. And yeah, cannot complain. And we really needed that help, and it would have cost a fortune to get someone up to weld for us. So it's just, yeah, we're really grateful. Thank you, Will. Right, time to begin the second coat. Now this coat was going to be slightly different because I can't see where I painted and where I haven't painted. By the side of the towpath, tunnel flashes would be very hard to do. So while we're here, we might as well get them done. Today's day three. And you're going to get a set back down with you. I'm going to turn it around at halfway. Oh, well done. Just do it from left to right. I'll go to the new one and then do the left. Yeah, today's day three. It's a bit of a second. Yeah. It's going to be a bit harder there. Um, it's a lot easier to get the first day. But it's still really on the way you've done. No, it is hard. You've got to try and memorize what you've done. Um, I've got a bit more to do with the front of the wall. That's it, second coat done. Look at it now. So today is day three, and did the second coat yesterday. Dad's done tile flashes and the engine room, uh, and the front tile flashes. But today is the last coat. It's one week. What? What's that? Oh. It's the one we have to get right. So I'm just going to be doing this oh, middle section here in between. The waterline and this top. What do you call it? What do you call this top thing? Hmm? What do you call that? Chine. Come on, Flash. Chine. No, never mind. Oh, the chine plate is the bottom one, but I, I don't know what they're called. I'll try to oh. find out. Tell them if anybody knows what they're called, I'd like to know. Yeah, this top one is. Um, Dad's going to do it because I'm not very good uh, with brushes. And yeah, he's not perfect, but he's probably better than me. So I'm going to be the next part. Yeah, I'm not the best way to do it is mask and take it off, but then... Yeah, it's going to take forever. Yeah. All when I do the green, I'll mask and take off the black. Yeah. See what I mean, rather than do it twice? Yeah, so... We've also got this tar brush. Yeah, Dad's going to do... Uh, under the waterline. Because yesterday, it was very pitted, and... Yes, there was a few little holes here and there. Dad had to get around and plug up, so he's going to do that. 
Look at the bow now, doesn't she look glorious? Now, if anyone's wondering when we're going to do a tour video, we're going to do it once the boat is actually finally finished painting in all aspects. And this was it. Today, Olive would see the light again. So instead of lifting the gate all the way back up, he pulls out some little like gate sluices and then the water comes rushing in. Don't worry, Licorice, we'll be out soon. And here we go, Olive's as fresh as a daisy. I have to clean it all off first. So, that is the blacking done. Blacking, I didn't call it blackening last time. Blacking. Blacking. See, we just moored outside of the dry dock. Um, literally just came out. Another boat came in, and that's how it works. It's like yeah. deja vu. Over and over again. Groundhog day. Yeah. Um, yeah, moving boat. And lovely couple of just going in there on the short boat, isn't it? Tidy little boat. But we're just, um, Dad's super exhausted, his knees are broke, like, pretty much had it. Um, so I'm just gonna rest here until Mum gets back tomorrow, I think. Then maybe rest here another night, I don't know. Uh, but absolutely beautiful spot here. Got sheep and lamb over there, swans, ducks, over yeah, here. Nice spot. Got lovely field and it's absolutely very plenty of solar. here though, because these are quite famous locks. Get a lot of boats coming past. Oh, yeah, we're, we're not going anywhere, son. Yeah, we definitely won't be going anywhere. Tomorrow. Josh will be sat in there and shut the curtains and <laughs> the world outside. Oh, beautiful weather. Yeah, it's Hopefully, lovely. it stays like this. Maybe we have a barb. I don't know. But yeah, that is the blacking done. Uh, quite an experience, wasn't it? Mm. I enjoyed it, actually. Yeah. <clears throat> really enjoyed it. It's hard work. It's harder work because of my knees, but if, if it weren't for my knees, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a problem at all. Yeah, the only complaint we have really is those 
like four foot, three foot, four foot, I don't know. Probably about two and a half, three foot yeah. chocks that the boat goes on. You've got to climb over them. Yeah, and me and Dad are both, well, I'm not very flexible and Dad's just Dad. <laughs> Well, I can't knees. bend my knees very well. <laughs> but to be honest, most dry docks are like that. Anyway. Yeah. I think that one's like 1800s or something. Yeah. Pretty I old. like the fact that you can drive in, drive out, you don't get charged for being taken out of the water by a crane or, yeah. or um, a tractor. You don't get charged for being put back in the water. You just get charged for the period that you use the dry lock dock for. So and maybe the pressure washer, like we did. Yeah, well, 30 quid, that was all about pressure yeah. washer. So. How much was it in total? £420. £420 plus VAT. No, that is with the VAT. Yeah. With VAT then. Yeah. So that's really good. That's the total bill. £420, including the pressure washer and four days in the dry dock. And we had to pay for four anodes as well. Yeah. And that was it, really. So, so yeah. the boat's got tw- At the moment, the boat's got 12 anodes on it. Yeah, God. Until the others finish wearing away. So overall, it's about 500 quid to round it off to. Yeah, really good actually. Yeah, yeah. So we got, I think we'll be coming back. It's twelve hundred pound, didn't yeah. we? I thought we'd be coming back, weren't we? Definitely, because they're so nice up here. It's very convenient as well. The, sh- the, the whole area is beautiful. You've got a shop and the butchers up in the town. You've got a little shop here that Fred and his wife run. That's really convenient because that's right by the by the dry dock, so you can pop in there and get your bread and milk. Mm. Yeah, it's great. So if you're looking for a dry dock in the Midlands area. Definitely recommend uh, Braunston. Mm. Braunston Union Carriers. Yeah, it's named after the Grand Union, so Union Canal Carriers. Yeah. I think that's going to be it. They do holiday boats as well. Nice video. Look them up. Um, all right, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.